Hey guys, uh, it is Maggie and Zach. <laughs> this is not where I thought this stupid IUI would lead me. Um, we are heading to the ER. Zach just got home from work. Um, basically, I got a call saying we want you to go to the ER. Your HCG is still climbing and we're concerned that you're gonna rupture. So the fastest way to get you into surgery is to go to the ER. This is not my normal hospital, because my hospital didn't have a surgeon that could take me until Monday, and it's Thursday. it's Wednesday. Wednesday. I was thinking it was, oh, wow. Yeah, I was thinking it was Thursday, too. It's Wednesday. Yeah. Um, so I will... I don't know. We're going to go to the ER and see what happens. <laughs> I don't know how long this is going to take. It's 7... Uh, 7 19 p.m. So we, we could be sitting in the ER for a while, or maybe they're gonna think that I'm at risk of rupturing quickly, so let's get it done quick. I don't know. There is a doctor on call. I have her name. I was told what to say when I get there. Um, I don't know. I don't even know how they consider this. They told me that a lot of the time it's done outpatient, but since I'm going to the ER and I'm a little bit complicated, I don't know if that's gonna be the case. I don't even know what this hospital looks like. This is this is all brand new to us. Um, was this like the closest hospital? Like, if uh, it was more urgent, do we, would that be a better one? I think Doylestown would have taken me. I think they, they do this, to, but I don't. Yeah. I'm sure if you go to the ER and say like I have an ectopic yeah. that feels like it's rupturing. No, that's what I've been thinking about. If this was because I know this is about a 40 minute drive. Yeah, they you. Well, they told me that, because I said my husband's at work, is it okay to wait until he comes home? Because I don't, like, we have the one car. Um, and they said, yes, but if you start bleeding or if you start having pain, you need to call 911 and get basically an ambulance to the hospital. And so that freaked me out. And I was like, I don't feel anything. Maybe, like, slight uncomfortableness, but I don't even know... If it's the thing that I should be looking out for, I have no idea. I, I like straight in the house. I called my dad. I was walking around the house doing stuff while I was talking to him. Just to like straighten up <laughs> in case anybody else had to come into our house. <laughs> um, and I was fine. So I don't, I don't know. This will be an interesting night. I hate this. I wish it was like scheduled and we could have gotten a good night's sleep and not felt like, am I dying? I don't know. And you just got done work and I don't love that you have to go right to the hospital okay. and sit with me while I, I don't mind. want, I don't know. My I truck just... is very loud. Shut up truck. <laughs> I'm trying to talk here. Anyways. Um, Zach, of course, will be my videographer of the evening. This is how I get through this. If I'm filming, I am okay. Um, he'll just be filming on my phone because I'm not bringing this into the... I have my camera now, but I'm not bringing that into the hospital. And I packed a ton of ostomy supplies because if it's my right tube that they're going to remove, it's likely they're going to make incisions under my ostomy and no one knows how to put on a stupid ostomy bag in the OR, so I brought extra. And I'm trying to text everybody to just keep them updated that it's going down tonight. It's not what I expected. I really thought they were gonna tell me, go in for a consult tomorrow and then over the weekend you'll get surgery. And that would have sucked because like, okay, I'm missing Easter. Yeah, but I know no. that's what I was thinking that it was I the weekend. I already told Jess. She's aware. Okay. Um, so. We're four miles away. And it's now bored. <laughs> Wish me luck. <laughs> it's raining. We're trying to find the ER. It smells like manure. <laughs> My very handsome husband, all dressed up, and I look like a bum. You look beautiful. <laughs> Probably the biggest hospital in the area that's not in Philly. <laughs> He's tying my butt string. 
This is not how this was supposed to go at all. But thank goodness. Is it just the one? Yeah. I'm gonna start crying when they ask me what's going on. I'm preparing you. You're shaking a little. I'm nervous. Oh, I am getting this on. <laughs> what? Yeah. Wait, is that? Oh. Um, <laughs> Your arms are tight. He <laughs> no. fit through the holes in the gown. Uh, this is wild. I have my, I have my ultrasound to confirm. Um, it is on the right side. They also actually saw the follicle that released. Oh, did they? On the left. Yeah. Huh. So it's confirmed it came from the left and traveled. That's not normal, is it? I don't know. She's like, maybe you ovulated from your right. And I was like, well, seeing as they were monitoring me, how many ultrasounds did I get? Many. There was nothing on my right. So now we're just waiting to see. Yeah. What happens next? Beeping. I don't know. Why are you so beeping? Because it's not picking up my heart rate. There it goes. Oh. I don't know. Um, it's past midnight, and the OBGYN surgeon was in another surgery, but she just came in and said that she wants to get a general surgeon in as well, just because of my surgical history. So we're just waiting, but it would be very likely outpatient for me. So hopefully I can go home in the morning. But I don't know when I'm going for surgery, so this might be my last update. Uh, and then I'll, I'll see you afterwards. went home for the night. Um, this is just... I know I look awful. I'm so tired. Um, my HCG last night that they did here was like 6,000. Yesterday morning at the clinic it was 11,000. So, they retested me again this morning. They said, we're waiting for that to come back, but there is a small chance we could do a third dose of methotrexate, which they don't usually do, to try to avoid surgery. And I don't know what I want. I have no idea. I want the decision made for me. so tired and I just want this over with and my clinic and the OBGYN that they told my story to made it seem like I was going to rupture like right away and the hospital doesn't seem as concerned about that so I don't know but I gotta pee and then I'm getting back into bed The nurse just came in and said that I'm on a regular diet again, which means no surgery. I haven't gotten updated officially from the doctors yet, but she came in with snacks for me. So I am feeling terrible just because I haven't eaten and I'm nauseated. So. My levels did go down to like 5,000, so. <sighs> oh. 
I'm in the car, obviously. I am home from the hospital. I got discharged yesterday afternoon. It has been the wildest few weeks, but the wildest like 48 hours. Um, I'm heading to the fertility clinic now because I'm getting another HCG draw and ultrasound. They also wanted to do methotrexate this morning and I think I'm gonna tell them no, which I don't, I don't like doing, but in the hospital, I had the whole OBGYN team come in to talk to me and they said, your levels are dropping appropriately, like even better than appropriately. They're dropping more than we would want. Uh, not like in a bad way, but in a, you're moving in the right, right direction faster um, than the minimum that we like to see. And so they were like, no surgery. We're not going to give you a third dose of methotrexate. We think you're good. We would like to follow up with you in a week or so. And they said, likely your fertility clinic is probably going to see you before that. And I was right. They called me yesterday. I was sleeping because I did not sleep in the hospital. It was awful. I did not feel good because I was NPO. Um, they did have me on fluids, but I, I had taken a lot more fluids orally um, than what they were giving me through an IV. It just, I need more. <laughs> um, they're used to people with colon. So I... I don't know what to think right now. They said if you do another dose of methotrexate, it's more for us than it is for you because you're responding appropriately to it and your levels are dropping and we didn't see a heartbeat in the hospital and <sighs> then I, when I'm sleeping yesterday trying to catch up on some Z's because I didn't get any the night before, um, the fertility clinic called and said we would like to do another dose of methotrexate and I just don't want to sorry I'm turning the heat on here because I'm cold I just don't want to the way that I am looking at this is I have a group of doctors telling me that it's working appropriately and the methotrexate has been hard and I I don't want to explain to them that it's been rough on my body because I don't want them to think that it's like something's wrong and I need to go to the hospital for it. I'm having appropriate symptoms for methotrexate. It's hard on a body like mine. And I don't like the drug. If this was not the circumstances that I was in, if it was for Crohn's, I would refuse methotrexate. It's just a drug I do not like. I know how it works, I don't like it. But I understand that rupturing is very dangerous. It's deadly, um, so I took it and the way the way I'm seeing it is what if I wind up getting surgery anyway I don't want more immunocompromising drugs in my system on the day of surgery I don't want to feel rotten ahead of surgery and be dehydrated because I was nauseated the whole day before um, and not taking in anything because that's that's how it's been the day after the methotrexate I am not eating or drinking much because it does not make me feel good I don't if I have to get surgery, I want to be in the best physical <laughs> position. Um, I don't want to be super immunocompromised. I'm already on the Humira and I, I just, I don't know. I, and I feel a lot better because now I know where I go. If something were to happen, I know the doctors who would care for me. They already looked at my belly and were talking about where they would make incisions and how to approach the surgery. So I feel a lot better in that stance. I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know who I was seeing or where I was going um, before. Now I do. Zach and I have our plan should things go south. Um, and I was also told by the doctors that typically with their ruptured ectopic pregnancies, people know. People are, it just is very obvious and everybody was so shocked because they kept pressing on my belly and they're like, are you having any pain? Like any, any discomfort? No, <laughs> I don't, I wouldn't know if you didn't tell me. I truly wouldn't. So, all right, I gotta fill up the car. I forgot about this. So I gotta fill up the car and then head to the clinic. Oh my gosh, this has just been, I'm so tired. We, I came home, went to sleep at like maybe 2 p.m. after eating some Wendy's. Um, fell asleep at 2 p.m., woke up at 5, was up for two and a half hours, and Zach and I got into bed at 7.30 p.m., and I was asleep within minutes, so it has been exhausting. Um, let's go to the clinic.
Okay, I'm done. We didn't do the methotrexate because they like heard me out about my worries. Um, I just, I feel so, they saw a heartbeat again and I think the hospital's ultrasound system was not as sensitive. It, it just didn't look as sensitive. Um, so I'm not that surprised by that. But I, I mentioned my worries with methotrexate, and I said, I just want to be in the best position for surgery. A, it did not make me feel good. I was not eating or drinking the day after, and I don't want to be sickly, like feeling sick and going into a surgery not feeling well. And I'm also worried about the immunocompromisation. And he said, well, that's not how methotrexate works. And I'm like, what? <laughs> he said it doesn't immunosuppress you, but it, okay. Am I being stupid and I just like don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to IBD meds? So I googled it from NCBI. Methotrexate is an anti-metabolite most commonly used in chemotherapy and immunosuppressant in autoimmune diseases. That's why it works with autoimmune illnesses is because it, it suppresses your immune system so it doesn't attack you. And he's like, well, no, it stops the development of, or, you know, the growth of cells. And I'm like, yes, but... <laughs> So now I'm like, am I an idiot? Do I just not understand it? And I was on mercaptopurine, which I believe is, it's not the same, but they're kind of used similarly. And that was an immunosuppressant. I know, because I was sick my whole childhood. We were in and out of doctors all the time because I was sick all the freaking time. <laughs> so now I'm like, am I just stupid? Do I just not know this drug? Arthritis.org, an analysis of 12 trials found a 25% increased risk of non-serious infection with people within people with RA taking methotrexate. Yes, I don't want to get an infection being on all these drugs, including Humira, after surgery if I wind up going that way anyway. I'm not stupid. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it just made me feel stupid. I'm like, yes, it, it no, it suppresses your immune system. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh my god, this is what I hate. Like, I know, I don't know anything about fertility stuff, but I know about IBD and I know about the drugs they use. Ugh. For heaven's sake, I used to give them in the hospital and I would have to teach parents about it. I hate this. Anyways, no methotrexate, because I was like... Well, they, they were like, how does it make you feel? Like, let's not look at the immunosuppression. How does it make you feel? I said, terrible. <laughs> the first time, I didn't feel good the next day. I was kind of nauseated, kind of um, just like achy. And then the second time I took it, the entire day I was out, um, which I think I took a clip of. I was, I was like that all day and I was not drinking a whole lot or eating a whole lot. And I've lost a pound according to their scale in the last couple days. <laughs> uh, and I, I also said to them, I'm just worried you give me another dose of methotrexate and I'm down for the count and I get dehydrated because things are weird with me. I know I'm not a typical case. Um, I don't want to go into surgery dehydrated, not having eaten and just feeling rotten to start because that will not lead to me bouncing back as fast. I said I would rather go in optimized hydrated eating get the surgery i know who i go to if something goes wrong now and just be better off <sighs> he just made me feel super stupid it doesn't mean to suppress what <laughs> yes it does i'm not stupid oh my god i've been googling <laughs> Googled in the elevator. I was like, wait, hold on. Let me look up this drug. I'm not stupid with this. Oh my goodness. No, I, I trust them. I know that they, they're not using it in a sense for like autoimmune illness. They're using it in a sense that it stops cells developing, but <sighs> well, this whole experience, I just don't know. I don't think I'm going to do another IUI. I don't, I have to like not go through an ectopic again because this has made me question so much. <laughs> Sorry, I just, I had to share that because now I'm like, 
did I lose everything I learned? I hope not. Anyways. I'm still tired. I'll get my HCG later today from here. They were like, we don't necessarily... We're just like worried because of the HCG levels between hospitals. And I was like, totally get that. Totally understand that. Labs can be different, come out with different numbers. Um, I have my numbers here from the hospital. And on March 27th at night, my level was 6,180. The next morning, about 12, maybe 13 hours later, I was 5,482, which is a decent drop. So I'm not going to count those numbers towards this. I'm going to go from on 327 AM. I was 11,085 here. And what's today? I think today's the 29th. So two days later, my hope is that there would be a significant drop in the 48 hours from that 11,000. The other thing that um, he had said, because he said, I know this is a special case, and the hospital I went to apparently is um, in touch with a colorectal surgeon that they work with. So that way, should anything go wrong and I wind up needing surgery, they now have a colorectal looking at the case. Sorry. I can't tell if it's just because it's a sad situation or if I'm emotional because there's pregnancy hormones still in me. I can't talk about this without crying, which is really annoying because I'm like, I told Zach, I'm like, I'm worried I'm not going to be able to get my thoughts across because I'm going to be all choky and not able to talk, which I was. I think I got what I needed to say out and they knew I was getting upset. I'm like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to talk about this calmly. <laughs> I'm just emotional for no reason. I mean, there is a reason. Huh. Okay. This video, I'm sorry. This is not a fun one to watch and people have probably clicked off by now. <laughs> um, I'm going to go home and take a chill day. Actually, no, I want to get some work done because I have some work that I've needed to do and I feel bad that I've had to postpone it so many times. Um, I want to get it done. Justin gave to call me back and say, well, we gotta do a methotrexate again. <laughs> and then I'm down for a day or two. Also, I don't want to discount the fact it is Easter weekend. And I want to see my niece and nephew because I haven't seen them through this whole thing. Because I haven't felt good. And I've been busy going to appointments every five seconds. And I just want to spend time with family and not feel like <laughs> It's Good Friday today. I was wondering why this whole parking lot was empty and then I like realized I was running late. I'm just an emotional mess today. I was running late already because I'm tired. <laughs> just slow from being in the hospital all night. And... Um, on the way here, I realized my ostomy was leaking because I'm wearing Hollister because I am running low on my Convitec and I'm trying to save it because I haven't ordered more because I haven't called the company yet to get the whole skin barrier wipe thing fixed because I've been focused on other things <laughs> and it freaking leaked all over me. So I had to manage it in the car. I want to go home and cry, but I put mascara on. <laughs> I don't want it to run because I want to do some filming today. <laughs> okay, let's just go home. I'm going to have another cup of coffee. That's what I'm going to do. That sounds really good. <laughs> let's go home. All right, guys, it's later in the day. I got Zach here. We are getting, uh, we're going to go to our favorite Indian place and get some food. Um, something arrived in the mail that I ordered for myself like a week ago. It is, I should have gotten a better clip of it. This is not the best lens. There you go. It is a rose gold ring with a little citrine stone inside of it, which is the November birthstone. So that was my little thing that I got to, I don't know, commemorate this whole awful experience. Um, I did get a call from the fertility clinic with my HCG level, so their labs must just be, I don't know, they are... It's weird how different the two are. It's so different. So my level did drop within the fertility clinic's numbers, so 11,000 two days ago, 
um, approximately. And then today it was 8,000 and like 700 ish. So it is dropping, but obviously I left the hospital where they told me it was in the 5,000. So their labs are just way off from each other. Um, but I do feel better now that I have two different systems saying it is dropping. So at least there's that. Um, I actually did have some bleeding today, which I was not having. They did the internal ultrasound and I didn't even know it was happening um, until I got up to put my pants back on and I looked at the pad underneath of me and there was blood. So I'm assuming my fertility doctor must have seen that when he pulled the wand out, <laughs> I would guess. Um, and then I actually just had a little bit more, but it's not. Um, there's like a little bit of red, but mainly it looks old. So I, I don't know, but I don't feel anything still. Um, and it wasn't a lot, so we'll see. And yeah, we've got the doggos with us. Um, but I wanted to update you. Uh, this is this is gonna be a long process. It's gonna take a while to get down to zero. I'm not guaranteed not to have surgery, but it does look a little less likely now. Um, so we shall see, and they're okay holding the methotrexate for now and just keeping a close eye on me, which I really appreciate, so. Anyways, guys, I hope that, it's Easter weekend, but this won't go up for a while, but I hope that, retrospectively, you had a great <laughs> Easter weekend, um, and we'll be seeing you soon. Bye, guys.